Welcome to our webinar, Four Steps to Better Patient and Business Outcomes. I'm Dano Ibarra, President and CEO at JTech. And with me today, I have Jeremy Lamont. He is our customer experience expert. You're in the business of enabling people to heal. You're trying to achieve both better business outcomes and better patient outcomes. When a new patient comes to you, you want them to have the best possible physical outcome. If you achieve the maximum patient recovery outcome, then your business will also have the best possible outcome. Sounds easy, but you know it's not. Why isn't it? Why is it so difficult? Well, when the pain is gone, the patient is gone. When patients stop treatment because pain is gone and they've not achieved maximum healing, re-injury is very likely. That's not good for the patient and it's not good for your business. Whether you run a cash practice or bill insurance or both, patient retention is a challenge. We call it PVA, patient visit average. A high PVA is essential to achieving maximum patient and business outcomes. We talked with doctors who see patients on an average of six or seven visits. After implementing these four steps we'll talk about today, their PVA doubles and triples. I'll turn the time over to Jeremy to explain how JTEC Medical can increase your PVA, making you the hero for your patients and for your business. Jeremy, take it away. All right, Dana. So I'm going to share a PowerPoint screen here, um, four steps to better patient and business outcomes. So as Dana was talking about, um, patient retention being the hero of the kind of the story of the patients as they go from injury to recovery and how uh, JTEC helps you to uh, to get there. So our solution uh, for this is uh, is really pretty simple. And uh, we're going to take a look at these four steps as, uh, as Dano outlined. So the first step is going to be to do a visual assessment of your patient to establish medical necessity for performing objective evaluations. You're already doing this. Uh, the, the idea of kind of getting a base point and saying, hey, Hey, something looks like it might not be right uh, is a really important step before you jump in with your objective assessments. But after you've done that, step two, performing a JTEC functional assessment captures that objective data. You need proof to show that actually what I visually saw is in fact the case. Um, this gives you the opportunity to share results with your patient and also to form a treatment plan, which is good for what you are doing as well. Uh, step three is to continually perform some JTEC functional assessments and share those results with that patient so that as your treatment plan progresses, you and the patient can both see the effectiveness of it and together plan for the patient's um, continual visitation there with you to continually receive those treatments. And then step four is to watch your patients achieve maximum recovery and see your business grow by forming that relationship with the patient, by having objective data to show them uh, that is uh, going to be one of the keys to retaining those patients and to growing your business. So let's take a look at step one here. Uh, this is establishing the medical necessity. This is something that you're already doing with your patient, gathering that information from them. You're listening to their explanations of pain and what might have caused it. You're already doing visual inspection, kind of eyeballing their range of motion, as well as manual muscle strength testing to kind of establish, is there some basis for loss of function? Uh, so you discuss their objectives for treatment. And if the patient has a clear, emotionally driven goal for the outcome of their treatment, they'll be more motivated to stay with the treatment program. Uh, for example, you might say, I want to be able to pick up my child and hold her without pain, uh, a, a pretty emotional and motivating goal to try to achieve. Uh, if you're billing an insurance company, you're most likely billing the initial exam under the code 99203 for visual inspection of range of motion, muscle strength, and so on, which establishes that medical necessity for performing objective evaluation evaluations with your JTEC system. But if you're doing cash only, you can perform the next step at the same time as that initial exam. It's the insurance company that typically wants you to do that due diligence. If the patient themselves are the ones who are driving that ongoing relationship, uh, you can go ahead and move on to step two. Uh, but if you're billing an insurance company, you'll want to set up an appointment for the next day or sometime after that same visit to uh, perform that objective evaluation. Uh, and we recommend billing that under the code 977. 
five zero. So that's step one. Step two is performing an objective evaluation. So this is where you take some of the uh, concerns that you've uh, that you've identified visually and manually, and you start to put some numbers onto those things. Uh, the JTEC functional assessment typically takes under 15 minutes, and it's usually performed by staff if you have them. So it's not something that necessarily needs to take up your time. Uh, when the tests are complete, then it's time to discuss those results with your patient. So you create an objective narrative custom report with one click from our system. It's really easy to do. Uh, and this is a critical component uh, of our proven system to increase the PVA, as Dano talked about. So with that report in hand, you as the doctor can now meet with your patient to discuss the findings and the treatment program and the goals that you established in step one. You can also submit this report to the insurance company and it will radically reduce the number of denials, but we'll talk about that maybe on some other day. Uh, so here's how you'll use the report with this patient. Let's kind of take a look at it here. Uh, so the um, what we're looking at here is basically a, a sort of a basic functional assessment. It will compare uh, the patient's performance in several key indicators, range of motion and strength against established normals or where normals may not be well established, you can use the patient's own bilateral uh, kind of normative uh, values of as their own kind of baseline. So for example, left side injured uh, shows a deficit, left side not so bad, and you can kind of use that to compare. Uh, and this gives you just really easily and quickly a good visual um, a uh, set of indicators that can be easily understood by the patient, explained by you. Of course, you'll take into account what you've observed functionally with them as well and uh, help to guide them toward the best decisions for their care. Uh, so you can recommend a treatment plan with this, the number of visits per week and the total number of visits to achieve that emotional goal that we talked about as well. And you can have that patient work with your finance person to kind of determine a schedule and a payment plan for that treatment. So here we give you with a uh, very little effort on your part, all of the uh, basic tools that you need to establish that and to keep going forward. Uh, step three here is where we are going to perform those reassessments. Uh, JTEC functional assessments can be performed monthly or at whatever schedule you deem necessary. Uh, you can bill the insurance company for those. I mean, that is uh, actual diagnostic care that you're providing. Uh, if you're cash only, of course, you can handle that directly with the patient. Uh, and you want to share this with the patient as well so that they can see their progress and the ultimate goal of the treatment. Uh, showing that progress is going to be really important emotionally for that patient, uh, especially since sometimes uh, functional loss may or may not be something that is easily discernible. People work on things like pain or, again, on those emotionally driven things, but showing them some data is a really important step, and that's what this report will provide you. So what we're looking at in this report here is a historic uh, comparison uh, of, in this case, uh, cervical rotation, twisting of the neck. We also have some shoulder flexion. And uh, for, for somebody who may not feel like they're making improvements, uh, showing them, hey, you're moving double what you were last time we saw you, uh, that might not be something that they really realize. They're living with that day to day, but seeing it on a sheet of paper with the hard data that you've collected from your JTEC system, super, super important for them. But I wanted to ask a couple of questions about this one. So when we look at the top graph, uh, cervical rotation, on the left, the two bars indicate, what's the blue bar and the brown bar indicating? So if you look above, there's a little key that shows uh, the blue is the rotation left side. So this is going to be the left and the right. Um, in our software, typically you're going to be looking at uh, opposing motions such as flexion or extension, uh, left and right rotation, things like that. So we put them together so that you can easily see if there's a bilateral functional imbalance. So if someone has uh, a, a much easier time looking over their left shoulder than their right, well, they're probably going to know that. But here you can see those compared side by side. Or in the case of, say, a sagittal motion, a forward and a backward, um, you'll be able to compare those opposing motions motions much more quickly when they're just visually right there adjacent to each other. That's great. And in this case, it looks like the first exam was done in March and their left and right were pretty much the same. However, up it says norm 80. Is that so they're at 11 and the actual industry norm is 80. So they are they have a lot of work to do. That's right. So the American Medical Association, who 
sort of dictates the standard of medical care in the U.S., uh, they actually have, for a range of motion all over the body, normal values, what they say kind of is a healthy, normal standard for all kinds of joint mobility. In the case of left and right rotation, you should be able to twist your neck almost all the way at a right angle to the left and the right. And in this case, yeah, that person is functioning at, you know, right around 10 percent of what they should. And I'll say if you see that person face to face, if they're only moving 11 degrees side to side, they'll know that they've got a yeah. functional deficit. But it gives you a really good way to say, well, here's where we are now, but here's where we want to get to. And so month to month, as you see this person for uh, retests and uh, serial evaluations, you can actually watch them move closer and closer to that normative line up there toward the 80 degree mark. Yep. Great, Jeremy. Thank you. And I have one final question. How long does it take to generate this report after you've done the testing? Yeah, that's a great question, Dano. Uh, and actually, we make it as easy as we possibly can with the JTEC Northstar software. Uh, in most cases, it's a one button report. So all of the. One button. the yeah, one button. Yeah, very often one button, or you can actually set up a couple of templates to make it easy for you to say, send one version of the report home with the patient and send another version for reimbursement to the insurance company as the proof of care. Uh, and it's we, we try to make it so that the time that you as the clinician are spending is not so much on the reports. We want you to be spending as much time as you can with your patient. So that's really important to us at JTEC. All right, then we move along to step four, which is those better outcomes. And uh, as the hero of your practice, you can rest assured that your patients are getting the best treatment and sticking with it, and your business is also doing really well. Um, giving them the control, giving them the ability to see what is going on in their healthcare, uh, you being able to give them the objective data they need to make those decisions, all of that contributes to those better outcomes, and we're here to uh, help and to make sure that that's what's going on for you. Uh, you can contact JTEC Medical for practice assessment. We can talk to you about how things are going for you now, how we can help you to get to a, a four-step program like this and increase your PVA. Uh, give us a call. We're available on the web at jtechmedical.com, but call us. Talk to one of our consultants uh, at 385-695-5000, or you can email us, sales at jtechmedical.com. And if you'd like some additional information about billing, uh, schedule a 15-minute no-cost consultation with our friend and colleague Lisa from Gold Star. Uh, and you can find their website there at the bottom, uh, calendly.com, and uh, you can copy that into your uh, web browser and get in touch with them as well. So, uh, Dano, I think that's what I've got to say about our four-step program. Would you like to close with anything today? Jeremy, that was amazing. 